Yesterday, when asked by a reporter if the legislature would take any action in the wake of the horrific school shooting in Oxford, the senator from the 16th district said, quote, if we get, set up, get obsessed with eliminating the risks, we'll evolve into a country that we don't recognize. Last night, I spoke with a group of Cub Scouts over Zoom, and one child asked, how could a 15-year-old even get a gun? So I was going to wait on these remarks to help give the community space to grieve, but in the wake of such callous remarks here in this body, remarks that imply that children killing children is simply the price that we pay in this country, I must rise today. But is anyone in this room truly surprised? For three years, I have stood up in this chamber year after year after year to introduce a resolution merely to recognize Gun Violence Awareness Month. And year after year after year, not only has this resolution not been adopted, the majority hasn't even let us vote on it. Year after year after year, I've stood up here merely to ask that we, as the Michigan Senate, are aware of the issue of gun violence. Are we aware now? Is it close enough to home? And does it even matter? Because I can tell you from personal experience what it feels like when a mass shooting impacts you, someone you love, takes someone you know, completely upends and devastates your friends, their families, and their lives forever. It is a feeling that no one should share. But this morning, countless friends, classmates, family members, teachers, staff, community members now know that same feeling, and they will know it forever. I listened and I watched national news cover this story and the refrain that commonly started these reports. Another school shooting, this time in Michigan. Another, this time. Common language because we know, we all know, that there will be a next one and the one after that, and the one after that, that this is the country that we recognize today. And every time we're told that now is not the time to talk about policy change, now is not the time to push an agenda, every time it's not the time for the past 22 years since Columbine. If not now, then when? Because this week a child brought a gun to school and killed four other children. Bridge Magazine yesterday reported that this legislature has blocked dozens of gun reform bills this year alone, including bills to create new criminal penalties for adults who fail to keep weapons out of the hands of minors. Would tougher laws have prevented this 15-year-old from getting access to his father's gun? I don't know. But I do know that doing nothing didn't stop this from happening. And if we continue to do nothing, then it will keep happening again and again and again, another shooting, this time. This is the only country in the world where this regularly happens. We are killing each other. Children are killing children. We live in a country where there are more guns than people. And anytime anyone brings up any ideas to help stop gun violence and put safety measures in place, we hear outcries of freedom. We hear that it is a right, that it shall not be infringed. But what about the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Why are children's lives worth less than guns? Because if I'm not mistaken, ever since the NRA changed course after Columbine by telling you that your rights are under attack and that someone is coming for your guns, has anyone ever come for your guns? Instead, we've seen record gun sales year after year after year, meaning there are more guns in our communities and that easy access to firearms has created a reality where children are killing children. And instead of addressing the root cause, we have been training children on drills to make themselves less likely to be killed. Are you in this job to represent the people that you protect to serve or are you here to sell guns? We can't even recognize gun violence in this chamber wouldn't dare, right? So I'm not going to stand up here today and ask you to do something because you've already made that choice. But if you're not going to do anything, then get out of the way so that some of us can at the very least try. Yesterday. Good evening. Welcome to Environmental Coffee House. This is Sandy Shellis. And Tonight is a somber night. It's an angry night. It's a night that really, really uh, <clears throat> affected me. It's not just 
it's kids everywhere. It's kids killing kids everywhere in neighborhoods, in schools. It's 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 negligent parents. It's a societal issue in our country, which if you fill in the blanks, our country is a shithole. And it's a shithole because it's allowed to happen. It's a shithole because we have the NRA, corrupt NRA. It's a shithole because the manufacturing is allowed to just go on and proliferate and be sold. It's just one more of our problems. And if you say to me, well, why are you doing this show tonight? You're a climate change, climate disruption channel. No, we are an environmental channel. And this is the environment we live in. We live in this environment in the United States. And those of you outside of the United States are watching this. We are watching our country kill each other. You are watching parents give a 15-year-old a Glock, if that's the gun it was. A handgun that is, <sighs> did shoot four beautiful kids. And there are thousands of beautiful kids, <laughs> thousands of beautiful kids in the United States. It is the end of an empire, folks. It is the end of the road. It is the end of the fucking road. So as I see what's going on out there in the chat, very important to me that I get to talk about this because it touched me. Now, I will never be a grandparent as I have a... 33 year old who is a you know non-breeder as she says but there are those of you out there who do have children and grandchildren and nobody thinks that they're going to send their kid to school and it's gonna and it's not going to happen there and it happens to every ethnicity in this state this country. It happens to the Jewish kids, the black kids, the white kids, the Italian kids, the green kids, the pink kids. It happens to all the kids. Our children are being sacrificed for the almighty dollar of Smith and Wesson or any of the gun companies out there. So I'm going to start out with recapping, recapping the story. And, uh, of course, we've seen the, this is the newest one. We've seen these lovely people. And we will hear this. And my system audio is working. Tonight, the suspected high school shooter and his parents under close surveillance. All three of them, the son and both parents, I now know they you are can segregated, hear it. each individually, in isolation. Uh, we have... Uh, advanced watch on them. James and Jennifer Crumbly joining their son in jail after being captured and charged Saturday with four counts each of involuntary manslaughter. How are you pleading to count one? Not guilty. How are you pleading to count four? Not guilty. The couple was arrested inside Andre Shakura's art studio early Saturday morning where police say they were hiding out. Sakura, a person of interest, speaking to NBC News through his attorney. He definitely didn't know that they were fugitives at that point. The minute he found out, he went to the Detroit Police Department okay. and immediately wanted to give them information. Now the school releasing new details on what happened in the hours leading up to the shooting. A teacher discovering the suspect's disturbing drawing. Drawing of a person who appears to have been shot twice and bleeding. Below that figure is a drawing of a laughing emoji. The school says the incident was immediately reported to the school counselor, but that the suspect told them the drawing was part of a video game he was designing. His parents arrived for an emergency meeting and were told to put the teen in counseling within 48 hours. School officials say the parents refused to take their son home. After counselors determined the 15-year-old wasn't a threat, they sent him back to class. Hours later, the suspect allegedly opening fire in a packed hallway, killing four students. Is it possible that school officials could face charges? It's, it's possible, yes. 
The impact of the latest tragedy on full display Saturday night. You please rise for a moment of silence as we honor the lives that were lost. The University of Michigan football team honoring the victims at the Big Ten Championship, paying special tribute to Oxford High School running back Tate Meir. I dedicated the game to him, his courage, and what he did. Oh my God. Megan, it's also sad. Hundreds of copycat threats mm -hmm. were made in the days following this tragedy, right? What do we know about Imagine those that. threats and where they stand? Kate, seven teenagers, all under the age of 16, have been charged with making threats against their school in the Detroit metro area. Uh, law enforcement has been clear that they are aggressively going after every threat. Okay. Thanks so, for watching our uh, YouTube no, channel. Yeah, Follow today's top stories and breaking you. news Bye. by... Okay. All right, so... As we move on, we see, you know, we're going to go back and talk to, about those children, you know, uh, kids again. And thank you, Kim, for being a mod. I have to fix this, by the way. Thank you, Kim. You're here. And I think maybe Kim Ashwari Kate might be here as well. So we're going to move on because what I'm trying to do as I do with every show is fold in the events of the day that just show and, and illustrate that we are, well, the collapse word. We are going to collapse. We are going to fascism. We are turning into a, well, we've probably always been this country. Now look at this. Just check this out. And this, this is like what happened in the, these guys were marching. Yeah. It, the, the fascists were marching. There they are. And I know you can hear this. You can hear it? Yep. Get out of the country if you don't like it. As she says. Now look what they're wearing. Look what they're wearing, the Nazis. The fucking Nazis, man. This is what's happening. These are Nazis. And if you don't think they're Nazis, you're out of your mind. <laughs> your mind. But this all folds into what I'm talking about. Isn't this lovely? Lincoln, who are you guys? And they're covered. Their faces are covered. Yeah. This is what we are breeding in the United States of America. This is coming out of our school who are districts. You guys? Yep. That's what's coming out of our school districts, guys. Uh, I'm going to shut each one as I go. That is definitely what's coming out of our, sh our school districts. And it is frightening, Cindy. It's frightening. And, and, and we're seeing it happen before our very eyes. And then, then you know, it all folds in. It's all, it's all like one, um, one big clusterfuck. The United States is a shithole country. I can't tell you. Look at this. This is Thomas Massey, a Senate, a, a congressman in the United States. And this is their uh, Merry Christmas on Twitter. This is what these motherfuckers look like. P.S. Santa, pre, please bring ammo. Is this, this is like, what the fuck? Where do we live? Look at, look at the mom's gun. It's absolutely in a wrong, you don't even aim it at anybody right? Is this sick? Sick! Oh my god. I, I have to find something disgusting for this. Something we could play. Yeah. This is really fucking sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, whoa! So that's what we're looking at, guys. These people, oh, well, these people are fucking sick. We just lost four innocent young lives to gun violence, and this congressperson thinks this is the appropriate time for this tweet? I have no fucking words for how insensitive and how grotesque this is. U.S. politicians are complete trash. Well, not all of them. Not all of them, hun, but a lot of them. Holy shit. That's how I feel. I look at this and I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Absolutely in the twilight zone. I mean, how can you not? How can you not? So we can go into, we, I mean, there's a lot about, you know, this, what's going on. 
Uh, all right, here was another one. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about, move down to, um, and, and, and see, I'm segwaying. I'm taking you through a whole thing, and then we're going to go back make our circle so shannon watts how come the same lawmakers who say gun laws won't stop gun violence believe abortion laws will stop abortion it's all tied it's it's like it's all tied these people say you cannot have a right to your body and i fought for that right I marched in Washington, D.C. with my kid in the carriage for NARAL. I fought for this right. And I have, it's eroded. I knew this was going to happen. It's horrible. I don't, I don't know what to do as an activist anymore. I mean, what do you do? You, it's happening before our eyes. We knew the Supreme Court was being, you know, they, they talk, they're a gaslighting bunch of scumbags. And they talk about the election being stolen. But the Republican Party in the United States, with a complicit, wishy-washy Democratic Party, let the Supreme Court be stolen. So really, stop the steal was the Supreme Court. That's what it should have been. That's what it should have been. So they're going to, that was, that was, uh, let me see if anybody else. Okay, yes. And then, of course, there's the comedian. That's Marjorie Taylor Greene. But we're not going to go into that one. She she equates uh, she equates cancer to COVID, <laughs> and actually makes tweets about it, and then says and and doesn't realize that <laughs> cancer is not spread by your spit. Oh, my God, we live in the Morano scene. We just live in the Morano scene. Well, I was at work in Highland Park, and I got a text from my son saying that there was a shooter in the school, and he was safe and in a room, but he couldn't get in touch with his brother. And I, uh, I, I panicked. Uh, my heart was in my throat. I just uh, <laughs> hollered at the guys at work that I had to leave, and I grabbed my stuff and took off. and. Uh, now we talk about the new normal. Oxford, got up there as quick as I could. I, I heard from my other son eventually, and uh, before I got up to Oxford, he called me and said that they were evacuating and they were going to be putting on on buses and taking them off the campus to the Meyer store around the corner. So I just uh, uh, headed up to the Meyer to wait for them to come out. It's uh, probably the most terrifying. 45 minutes of my life now. Actually, it was about uh, almost two hours from when I got, or an hour and three quarters maybe, from when I got the first text What when I actually got them, when they came out of the store. And uh, as soon as they came out, I just grabbed them both and hugged them and got them to the car. And then we drove to the middle school to pick up their little brother. And uh, came here, and uh, that was it. It was uh, a whirlwind of an afternoon, uh, but I was just grateful to have my kids. Yeah. Everybody, all parents have to feel that way. Grateful to have their kids. I'm going to come up for a minute, and we're going to talk. I got a, a comment here, and it's, it's, it's something I wanted to bring up in this. Gee, no, you can't take guns from a homeowner if she or he, he or she hasn't shot up the neighborhood lately. And I am a legal gun owner, and I have a right to have it. And so this is not hypocrisy, it is the law. It's an old pal barrel shotgun, but I'm a gun owner. And when the state trooper came here at one time, when I called here for them to come, they told me I could have it, right? I'm, I'm legally legal. It takes nothing, okay? Now, in New York State, you have to go through a whole... Uh, 
I, I don't have it. A whole thing you, to get a pistol permit. And then there's concealed carry or a pistol permit. And you fill out all the information and it does, it's a lengthy process in New York. And you gotta, you have people that have to vouch for you, write letters, um, such and such, okay? In New York State, it's called the SAFE Act. I don't know if I could pull up the SAFE Act right now. The SAFE Act was supposed to go in front of the Supreme Court. And the media that I saw was that we were gonna lose the SAFE Act. And this is New York. You know, it was a good law. And I'm going to say the show here is not um, towards hunters or people that do, you know, sports or target shooting. This is the, the, the people that are buying multiple guns. They need to be registered if they're going to do it. I mean, there's a lot of remedies, but nobody wants to take the remedies. So I, I, I wanted to talk about that before we, uh, we went on a little bit and uh, look at your comments um, about that. Okay, so, uh, all right, then um, Gary says a 17-year-old, an AR-15 to go to another state to kill others and then get away with it. Well, that was, yeah, that was the Rittenhouse trial. Mm-hmm, uh-huh. Um. Robert, government can't be trusted with an unarmed population. It's more of a poverty issue and an issue of horrible parenting. We never target the root cause of anything. We make business from symptoms. Okay, let's let's pack that down. Uh, government can't be trusted with an unarmed population. I can't make heads or tails of that one. It's more of a poverty issue. It's more of a, an issue of horrible. There's so much to this. And the root cause, the root cause is profit and capitalism. The root cause is this is big business. This is big business for the manufacturers. This is big business for the NRA. This is big business. It's, it's a business decision. And the casualties are the citizens just like they always are just like they always are so i wanted to try to answer that um <laughs> i know background checks are pure bullshit gun owners have already checked out as lunatics see you know i wouldn't say i'm the typical gun owner this is just an old shotgun but nonetheless there's no children here i'm not a whack job i'm not giving it to a child Say, and this was really important that Jonquil said they left their kid and ran down to Detroit. There are two border crossings. Well, we're going to get back to that. We're going to make a full circle and go through uh, this whole thing. Um, I had another, uh, another, um, there was another, Allison. Allison. Hi, Allison. She's on uh, YouTube. This is the end. I agree. How can leaders do nothing? What type of mass psychosis has has uh, has captured our lives? No words. Allison, darling, you are not alone. You are not alone. Absolutely not alone. I, I I'm I'm just uh, as I watch all this stuff. I don't know. I feel powerless. Is the uh, uh, I don't know. And be a enemy is too strong. We can't fight it. What we can do is plan for when this enemy no longer exists. Yes, Adam, you were here with me last night. Absolutely. So I'm going to uh, bring you back to this article. I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm just coming up to give you a, you know, around the world little view of the things that I came up with to uh, stop being upset, you know, stop being, I was very angry today. I, I, but I felt so sad. How could you not feel sad for all the children that are, that are being slaughtered? But yet a woman can, just can't get an abortion, even if she's raped. I mean, it's, it's like fucking disgusting. Oh my Lord. Uh, it, it is. It's honestly disgusting. All right. So let's take a look at this and see it. Let's take a look. 
I, I want to make myself smaller. There you go. Look at that. It's, I'm little. I'm in a, in a, I'm in a space capsule, guys. We can bury me. All right. Prosecutors say the parents of the 15-year-old accused of killing four classmates failed to act on troubling signs. The parents pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter charges. Let me tell you <laughs> uh, what I would do with that mother. I'd like to bitch slap her. Isn't that violent? But I'd like to go, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> bitch slap. And that sounds lousy. Maybe it's a sign of my age. <laughs> but that's what, I, that's what I thought of. Just slapping her and saying, what the hell? All right. So an early Christmas gift. It's a, It was a nine millimeter six Sig Sauer handgun. My new beauty, Ethan Crumley, 15. That's it. These people were fucked from the get-go. Where do they become radicalized idiots? The NRA, the media, the GOP, the Republican Party, sorry. The, 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 they are. And, you know, I had read how the, the Republican Party, when, when the first, well, it wasn't the Republican, when Charlton Heston was the NRA guy, and he... Uh, they had to come up with a whole thing after the first school shootings. Then they just kept happening. So as they happened, they would have, uh, they would have uh, gun shows in the vicinities <laughs> of shootings. Okay, so we all saw this. Anybody that's watching the news, and I, I tried today not to. I didn't go to the store. Because I wanted to feel better, but I didn't feel better. I started feeling worse about just these things. And I thought, well, I'm going to bring you along with it, with me on it. And we're going to work it out, at least for tonight. So this is what happened. She wasn't mad. You know, you just have to learn. You learn how not to get caught. Wow. I mean, this is an extra hard bitch slap. And if I, I really wish I had a bitch slap. But what do, let me see what I have in my sound effects. What can I do to her? All right, there she goes. She's going to have some thunder over her because she's about a stupid bitch. Sorry. I'm showing my yonkers and brogs. <laughs> All right, on Friday, they, let's see the chill, the chilling details. Uh, let's see. They're gonna. Uh, they were culpable. They were culpable in the year's deadliest school shooting because they allowed. Oops, sorry for banging into this it's new one. Uh, they allowed their son access to a handgun while ignoring glaring warnings that he was on the brink of violence. What the hell? Yeah. It was, I have to say, Michael Moore's Bowling for Columbine was a great movie. Everybody should watch that again. You know, in fact, Veg Veggie gave me a good idea. A good idea. So I'm not going to go through this one. I have another one. And actually, this is some statistics. So, of course, we couldn't go through a whole show without me showing you the numbers. Okay? Now, this is actually, um, this is a lot of information. So I don't think we're going to go through this whole thing, but it's illustrative of how fucked we are. <laughs> how really fucked we are. All right, here we go. It starts in February 29, 2000. Cause my, uh, my thing was, um, I'm going to put you guys over there. My thing was to go through this millennium, not, not go through the, you know, this is the 20 here. Let's go. So there was a Buell. It started in Flint shooting of Kyla Rowland at Buell Elementary School. A six-year-old boy fatally shot six-year-old classmate Kayla Rowland. To date, the boy is the youngest documented fatal school shooter. Okay. So the year 2000, it started. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, let's see. We'll, we're going to go down more because, you know, we could, we could, I could be on this for the whole rest of the show. And that's not the point. I want to illustrate, though, it's nothing new here. Absolutely nothing new. 2001 in California, 15 year old student 
Charles Andrew Williams killed two students, 14-year-old Brian Zucker and 15-year-old Randy Gordon at Santana High School. In total, he wounded 13 others. Williams was arrested and convicted of murder and attempted murder. He was sentenced to life with a chance of parole serving 50 years. All right. Here we go. And we can go down to 2002. And uh, let's see, 16-year-old student in February in Milwaukee, uh, Joseph Johnson, was killed by Philip Jackson Jr. when violence erupted between rival supporters in the parking lot after a basketball game. So if guns were not manufactured and not on the streets, and I don't give a rat's ass what all these people say oh they'll always the criminals will always find a way to have guns fuck you if they were not manufactured so uh you know like uh ice cream trays just manufacture uh just keep chugging them out keep chugging them out keep selling them keep getting them at gun shows keep selling them at stores all over the United States. If that didn't happen, these kids would not be getting them because there would be far less of them. Okay? 2003, a 10th grader was shot in the leg in, I mean, Cardozo High School. He didn't die. But there was a three-hour lockdown. But this is what kids have been living with for years. <laughs> yeah, let's go down to 2000. Uh, 2005. Um, let's see, after breaking up a fight, a group of youths at uh, Wequahic High School in New Jersey, Special Officer Dwayne Reeves was shot and killed and his partner wounded in the hand by two men who pulled up alongside in a car. Despite being wounded, Officer Reeves' partner was able to return fire and hit one of the suspects in the stomach. That was <laughs> kids at a school. All right. Kids at a school. And uh, let's go down a little more. 2006. My gosh. Let's see here. All right, another one. Washington, D.C. Eugene Huff, 17, and an unnamed 16-year-old male sophomore were arguing at one of Cardozo's entrances. The fight climaxed when... Eugene pulled out a handgun and shot his classmate in the leg. The shooting was captured on the school surveillance system, and witnesses said they heard as many as seven shots. So it goes on and on and on and on and on. Okay, here we go. Let's go down to, let's let's move up a little. All right, let's see. Any, uh, let's find some of the grizzly ones. They're all grizzly ones. If you have to go to school and think you're going to get shot, because it sure as shit wasn't like that when I went to school. All right. Mm. An active shooter situation was reported in Augusta, Georgia, at Payne College on Monday, with one person reported to be shot. The suspect was apparently apprehended and in custody. It was the second shooting incident to occur at the college campus in two days. So I, I suppose we don't have to keep going. It's just on and on. 215, here, Glendale, Arizona. Two 15-year-old girls died in an apparent murder-suicide at Independence High School. Apparently, an apparent murder suicide, but they had a gun. You know, they had access to a gun. They're all getting them. <laughs> That's our society. Other countries are not like this, guys. <laughs> like, no country is like this for freedom. Freedom. All right. So we're getting down there, we're getting down to the end here. As you see, 2019 here but but look at the statistics here it doesn't stop it doesn't stop no so we went through behind the charges and we're looking at the list and here's a here's the article about smith and wesson chooses business and profits over lives and god's safety all right it was a guest viewpoint and uh I, again i'm just going to skim it 
Smith & Wesson had announced plans to move some manufacturing operations to Tennessee, claiming it was under attack by gun safety advocates who initiated legislation to ban the manufacturing of firearms that are illegal to use in Massachusetts. A gun manufacturer claiming to be under attack would be laughable if lives weren't at stake. Nearly 40,000 lives. 40,000 lives are lost to gun violence each year. Each year, over 1 million Americans have died from unregulated firearms over the past three decades. They are being manufactured somewhere. Well, so, uh, okay. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but Smith & Wesson's announcement last month came with the claim that our legislation is to blame. If passed, the bill would prevent the manufacture of military uh, assault weapon, uh, assault style weapons in Massachusetts. <laughs> Consistent with our longstanding ban on the sale and ownership of these weapons in the Commonwealth. Smith & Wesson claims as much as 60% of their revenue comes from the sale of these assault weapons that's pretty sick shit isn't it we are just guinea pigs in a, in a whole capitalist consumerist oligarchic mess which is really a kleptocracy of clueless fucking morons humanity <laughs> today i'm not happy with humanity all right so their heart breaks for the nearly forty thousand families that lose loved ones to this a billboard we created after the Aurora shooting carried a simple message. Assault weapons have stopping power. Fortunately, so does your vote. Good riddance, Smith and Rats Wesson and his executives. We hope Tennesseans will remember this as they head to the polls next year with a new gun manufacturer of deadly assault weapons in their midst. So it's all there, you know, and, and are we going to be able to stop it? Lock down, lock down, lock the door. Shut the lights out. Say no more. Go behind the desk and hide. Wait until it's safe inside. Lock down, lock down. It's all done. Now it's time to have some fun. Yeah. Yeah, that's literally, but it was supposed to be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It's a poster. And this is research about uh, the impact of school safety drills for active shooting. Kids are fucked up. And it's so sad. And, and, and I don't think the fear of a nuclear weapon hitting was as strong as this because this has gone on for decade after decade. Okay, so these active shooter incidents in schools are tragic and they traumatize communities and the nation. OK, even though they say less than one percent occur on school grounds, drills to prepare students and staff to respond in the uh, unlikely, which is getting to be very likely event of a shooting have become near, near universal practice in American schools today. Beginning largely after shooting at Columbine, 1999, schools began implementing drills in an effort to protect students from active shooters, and the practice has steadily increased since. So you get the you get the the idea. There's a lot of research out here, and uh, oh, look at that! At see, and this can happen to kids. This happened in Florida the land of freedom at Lake Brantley high school in Altamont Springs, Florida chaos ensued after a code red drill. Students were not told the exercise was a drill. One student commented, no one really talked about the emotional impact, which I feel like is more longer lasting. I feel like administrators never really recognized that people had panic attacks so kids are being traumatized they really are they're just they're 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 being traumatized and it is awful so i've got some more i just want to see what you guys are talking about because you know the 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 chats um the chat is going 
going, going, going. Jean, in 2020, gun violence killed nearly 20,000 Americans. An additional 24,000 people died by suicide with a gun. Let's see. Myla, as someone who grew up ducking and covering under my desk at school, I'm here to tell you the drills were hella traumatizing too. It's not a competition. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. You're right. It isn't a competition. Children are traumatized. Yes, and they're traumatized all over the world. We're just getting traumatized children from duck and cover or from from guns from their classmates. Thank you, Myra. You are completely acknowledged and I stand corrected. I stand corrected. All right. Uh, Gary says, what are we moving to? Every kid carrying a gun like the Wild West. You know, even in some Wild West towns, <laughs> you went into town, you had to check your gun with the law before you could even go to the, the town. Right? Right? Yeah, here you go. Billy Joe's Mo. TV and, P and movies purposely show people holding a gun against you. Law enforcement requests, I, re wait, I, remove, I remove guns from people. I lost it. Oh, yeah, here it is. From people that done that to me. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> oh, Gary, you're, you're particularly, that's what Congress wants us to kill ourselves off. <laughs> oh, all right. So, yes, earthquake drills, natural, must be scary, but it's not the unknowing of a kid coming in and just shooting your class up, you know, sitting in a class learning math and your classmate is 15 with a very powerful weapon of mass destruction, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. I was three miles away when the Dunblane massacre happened. The government locked up the finding of that in the inquiry for 100 years. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Maybe, maybe Bear was a typo in the Constitution. It might have read the right to bear arms. I have to say that was always what my um, soon-to-be ex-husband would say because he has no tattoos and a lot of his friends didn't. He would hold up his arms and go, I have the right to bear arms. Ha, ha, ha. That's pretty good. All right, you did good with that one. That, that gets the applause. Thank you. <laughs> I like that one. All right, so we... we, we um. We'll do a little deflection and let's move on. And we're, I just want to show you that um, don't worry. Okay. Don't worry because the NRA has gun shows near you and they are recruiting. So it's very important to see that. Uh, look at this. If it's more important ever than ever ever to spread the NRA's message and bring new members into the association. Immediate openings exist for sales-oriented individuals interested in working public events such as gun shows, political rallies, local gatherings, and events populated with like-minded folks. This is pretty fucking disgusting. Political rallies like, okay, if you join the NRA or you're going to work and do this, you can do the next Trump Nazi rally. Okay, that would be just so great. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Find gun shows near you. And they have, uh, okay, basic firearms training. That's what they were for. Basic firearms training. But there's a whole lot of other shit too. Places to shoot. Refuse to be a victim seminar. I wonder what that's like. Refuse to be a victim. Have a gun and give it to your kid to bring to school. Okay, so they're looking for recruiters. And uh, <clears throat> they have programs, which I am not against anybody learning. I took it myself. I, did, I, I took courses through my local um, county to be proficient in the, the firearm that I do have. Um all right, so there you go. Then and that's uh that's what they're doing, you know. They are they they like to have uh oh, I had something on it, but all right, this is old stuff. So I, I'm just gonna come back to us and I'm gonna wrap up the show because it was really what I wanted to get to you guys was the 
the craziness of our country and how this is just it, we live in a very sick society and it's really really sad it's so sad guys Kate says, I lived in a small rural town in central Wisconsin. There were gun shows at local high schools. The schools staged actual Civil War reenact reenactment for the children. Um, where I live, we have a Civil War reenactment every year, and I'm a northerner. <laughs> so, uh, all right, where does all the ammo get made? Follow the money. In Appalachia, Army-owned bases where for-profit manufacturers ex enrich BAE systems at taxpayer expense. Follow the money. Follow the money. So there you go. I mean, we've gone full circle. The parents of this kid that shot up, you know, shot up these kids, these beautiful kids. These kids are dead because those fucking assholes gave their son a sag sour. And this kid was taught to think that this thing was something to be enamored of. Something to be enamored of. And it goes full circle. Can we change the politics? Can we change what's happening? Can we avoid uh, Nazis marching in <laughs> at the Lincoln Monument under the, the, the guise of Reclaim America? Are they reclaiming America from what? From people of color? From America is the United States is, is the... Um, it is the uh, the melting pot. That's what it is. The melting pot. All right, guys. Become a member if you want. Uh, you, you know, you can... Uh, I got to get that out of there. Please like and subscribe. I'll do all this shit at the end. Thank you. Buy me a coffee changed a little bit, but thank you. I want to say thank you to those of you that do. I really appreciate you guys. Um, thank you for listening tonight to my beginning to the end and just a review of, of what the hell is happening and, and how crazy we are. You know? Hi, Toro. Toro says a, um, a society that doesn't have dessert a society like this doesn't ha have or deserve a long existence and its days are numbered. I, I, I do think so. Hello, David. Uh, RPM removed assault weapons or automatic firearms. Full registration for rifles for hunting. That's great. Full registration for a rifle for hunting. There's nothing wrong. Insurance on, on your weapons if you have a weapon. If you are a gun owner, have insurance. It'll have to go through the system. Why can you drive a car and not have gun you know, have a gun without insurance. Shit. Shit. My God. I could read your guys' uh, comments all night. De uh, Devon, you're, you've got some good stuff here. Open Burns, uh, three wins. ProPublica, it's obscene, and you pay for it. Thank you, Devon, for getting the information out to us. Kim, thank you for moderating. And uh, yes, and Maya, and thank you all for being here. Kemishwari, Kate, thank you very much. And uh, hi, Phil. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to uh, end the evening. I do. I'm supposed to have a show tomorrow night, um, usually Monday nights. Jennifer will not be back. Wait, was it this week? No, she might be back with me Friday. I don't even know what the date is. Yeah. All right, guys. So what do you say out there? Ah, killing is always easier the farther one is from the target because the feeling of more disconnected. Not a good thing for one's spiritual being. No, it isn't. Nope, none of this is. We have to deal with our society. And let me tell you, I'm just going to say about sickness, and that's another problem, mental health. But physical sickness, which is what I think happens to me over all this, there's only so much you can take. So we have to take care of ourselves. We definitely do. 
And that's a spiritual path that we have to walk. We absolutely have to walk. All right, guys. Yeah.